One of the main areas of automotive development now is electric car batteries. One of the worst places to put a battery is in an automobile. Batteries don't tolerate being emptied very well, therefore EV batteries are frequently discharged and recharged. They are also rattled across uneven pavement, burnt in the hottest parts of the summer, and frozen in the winter. Batteries struggle in the cold, just like the humans who use them. Anyone taking pictures with a battery-operated camera in the snow has definitely observed the charge indicator deplete far more quickly than it should have. The news is not all bad, though. A potential fix for that final issue has been found by researchers. Scientists at the US Department of Energy may have created a battery that can store energy in the cold just as well as it can at a comfortable room temperature by making changes to the battery's chemistry. How does a battery work first, before everything else? An electric battery consists of two electrodes, with an electrolyte positioned in the space between them, in case you forgot. The wires that carry the electricity to the equipment being used are attached to the electrodes. Before being used, the electrolyte effectively stores the electricity. In most cases, it is a liquid or a paste, with the exception of solid-state batteries, where the electrolyte is, as one might assume, a solid. The electrode at the battery's one end reacts with the electrolyte to produce power. Electrons are released as a result of this chemical process. A separate chemical reaction occurs between the electrode and the electrolyte at the battery's other end. This reaction requires more electrons before it could occur, such as those that have been liberated by the chemical activity at the opposite end of the battery, in contrast to what is happening at the other end of the battery where electrons are being released. The way a battery is constructed prevents electrons from simply hopping from one end to the other to reach their destination. The wires that are attached to the battery must be used to transport the electrons when they leave the battery through the electrodes. The electrons are then readily sent through whatever motor, light, or stereo that the batteries are powering at the time. As a result, when a battery is removed from a device that uses it, the battery ceases to produce electricity. The chemical process halts until the next time the electrical device is utilized since there is no route for electrons to get from one end of the battery to the other. A cold-resistant battery, the new addition for battery electrolytes is called lithium difluorooxaliterate, but it's usually abbreviated to LIDFARB because it's easier to say and type than the full name. It has a significant benefit over other additives now in use in that it still functions when batteries get cold. Even in the deepest freezes of winter, the car would still have a reasonable driving range. According to scientists, a lid-farb battery is effective down to minus 4 degree Fahrenheit, minus 20 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, in lab tests, lid-farb batteries maintain their capacity even after being discharged and recharged 400 times. One may argue that the fact that an EV battery would be discharged and recharged more than 400 times over the course of its lifetime is one of the reasons why lid-farb batteries are still in the testing and development stages. The risk of fire when using lid-farb batteries is also lower. Due to the way their internal chemistry feeds the flames, lithium-ion batteries are notoriously challenging to put out. They have a burning temperature that can split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Some people might recall that the explosive nature of the Hindenburg was caused by hydrogen gas, but lid-farb batteries don't have this risk of explosive, self-replicating flames before anyone freaks out. EVs are no more fire-prone than a car with a half-tank of gas. Although they have the potential to catch fire in an accident, the subsequent fires would be far simpler for firefighters and rescue personnel to handle. Why lid-farb batteries are not available yet? Simply said, the technology isn't yet prepared for mass production. Lidfarb batteries are not yet ready to be installed in every automobile and every cell phone, much like the water-based batteries, which also exhibit great promise in lab settings. Before anyone starts producing them in factories, they still need to be tested against the harsh realities of the real world once all the laboratory quirks are ironed out. Furthermore, the techniques for mass production still need to be refined. As is obvious, Scaling up battery manufacture is much more difficult than doubling a cupcake recipe. Lidfarb is incredibly pricey as well. Currently, $239.50 per gram is what one scientific supplier is offering. Last but not least, nobody is entirely certain how fluorine in batteries might affect the recycling process. It would be necessary to properly retrieve and catch the fluorine itself. The ozone layer hole was mostly caused by fluorine-containing chemicals. It is unreasonable to assume that fluorine in the air would just free float 
and never react with anything it bumps against. Thus, the fluorine needs to be carefully managed. Pure fluorine does not harm the atmosphere, but compounds that contain fluorine do. Batteries are changing more frequently than ever before. Other battery technologies are being developed besides lid fob. One of the most active areas of scientific research at the moment is electric batteries. The widespread usage of batteries, which were used in everything from Walkmans to inexpensive toys, infuriated many people in the 1980s. Their complaints, though, seem antiquated in light of how widespread batteries are today. As a result, it is becoming more difficult to disregard batteries' drawbacks. A number of issues have become more urgent, including the need for rare earth materials, all that lithium has to come from somewhere, the risk of fires, the demand for more thorough recycling procedures that extract absolutely everything that could possibly be reused, the requirement for batteries to withstand being repeatedly discharged and recharged, and other related ones. The prevalence of EVs has increased the visibility of each of these issues. The battery in an electric vehicle EV is often the biggest battery a person would ever own for their home. In addition to being continually jolted and rattled on poorly maintained roads, EV batteries must survive inclement weather, the constant threat of punctures from negligent driving, and other challenges. Additionally, and this is something that isn't talked about as much the still emerging EV, era may be the first time that such enormous batteries have been sold in bulk to customers who aren't concerned about them. Most drivers don't constantly consider their powertrains, which is something that car aficionados frequently neglect. As a result, the batteries in EVs will need to be built to withstand years of use by users who don't care about the very minimal basic battery maintenance that is required. Although the so-called appliance cars and the people who possess them are frequently mocked by automotive purists, such automobiles account for the majority of those on the road. An EV battery must be able to endure being parked below a vehicle that receives the least amount of maintenance. Batteries are currently one of the main areas of EV study for all of these and more reasons. Whether or not lid-fob batteries fulfill their initial promise, it is unquestionably true that the current generation of EV batteries will appear as wonderfully archaic as a 1950s engine in a shorter period of time than most people believe. A really cold Chinese equivalent, on the other hand, scientists from the Beijing Institute of Technology and Tsinghua University have a slightly different theory about the chemistry of fluorine batteries. In their method, a higher concentration of lithium salt is dissolved in a solvent that is 90% ethyl acetate and 10% fluoroethylene carbonate. Its cell work down to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit, maintaining more than three quarters of its room temperature capacity at that temperature, and working for 1,400 cycles when used in a cell with a graphite anode and an NMC811 cathode, 80% nickel, 10 each manganese and cobalt. Please take note that none of the technology we're talking about here should be mistaken with a fluoride iron battery, which is a solid electrolyte concept that only works at very high temperatures. Having said that, what are your thoughts on this new battery chemistry? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.